The Pacific is really not that far away from launching into Battlefield 5 now, and as time goes on, we're getting drips and drabs of new information about this new theatre of war that we're going to be playing in probably a month or so's time. Now, the last video I brought you had some details on new weapons that we're likely to see in the Pacific, and that was based on a data mine. And today we've got a little bit of a mix of information. We've got something official to talk about, and the rest of the data then comes from data mines again. So make sure you've got your pinch of salt ready. You are going to need it for this video. But just before you take the pinch of salt, a message from our sponsor, Elgato. These guys make the best recording and streaming equipment in the business. That's 100% fact. There's no salt required there. Check them out with a link at the top of the description. Okay then, let's start off with the official information. Right now, Battlefield 5 has some sales going on and you can pick up the game at a pretty sizable discount, but it's what's linked to those sales that we want to talk about here. This image that DICE is using to promote these in-game sales. We have an image of a Japanese soldier. Now, besides the end of the Chapter 4 trailer, this is pretty much the first look that we've gotten at any proper assets for the Pacific Theater. The soldier looks quite similar to the one in the Chapter 4 trailer, but obviously he's now holding a different pose and he's holding a melee weapon. We think this is a Gunto sword. Now, these were issued to the Japanese army and the navy at the end of the samurai era in the 1800s. And the Type 94 and Type 98 Gunto swords, they were issued during the Second World War to NCOs, non-commissioned officers. It's very likely that we're going to see plenty of Japanese melee weapons arrive with the Pacific Theater, considering their striking appearance. And now we're going to talk about some more melee weapons, even more Japanese ones to talk about. With these other melee weapons, be aware we are now moving from official info to data mined info. Everything we talk about from this point forward in this video, it isn't confirmed, it isn't locked in yet, so now is the time to take your pinch of salt. First up, we have the Katana. Within the 4.6 patch, there were assets found that represented the Katana on the back of a soldier, and that led to the idea that the melee weapon might be present on the soldier's body during gameplay, rather than it just magically appearing on the screen when it's selected. This graphic here, it shows the katana within the sheath on the back of the soldier and an empty sheath as well, and that's presumably for when the katana is drawn. Right now, there is no asset for the katana melee weapon itself, so I can't show you that, but this would be quite an interesting change for Battlefield. Soldiers don't normally show, at least externally, any other weapon that they have in their loadout unless it is the selected weapon that they're holding. And then, of course, you're holding it in your hands. If DICE is making strides to show assets on the soldier's body that can then be equipped, that might open the door to more elaborate systems in the future. Maybe a soldier's outfit could have extra items applied to it beyond the base look. Perhaps medals, for example. That would be really cool. Next, we have the kunai throwing knife. This appears to be a Japanese variant of the throwing knives already available in Battlefield 5 that can be used by the German and British forces. With both the American and Japanese factions coming to the game very soon, there are surely going to be more of these variant kind of additions. We're going to see American and Japanese launchers, for example, instead of the German and the British ones that we're already using. And likely we're going to see different models of frag grenades as well. The British and Germans already have separate versions of those. The in-game description for the kunai reads, most likely derived from a masonry or gardening tool and transformed into a formidable and silent throwing weapon. Then we have the K-Bar knife, I think I pronounced that correctly. This is an American-made and American-used knife in the war. It was used for fighting and utility. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the standard issue knife of the American faction. There's also a Tanto mentioned in the files. This is a Japanese short sword that was worn by the samurai class of feudal Japan. Many were used during World War II, where before the conflict started, the number of Tanto swords in Japan in circulation went up to an all-time high. And then also, a bone saw is mentioned. This sounds pretty nasty. Judging by what kind of melee weapon this is, it's probably going to end up as a Tides of War unlock of some sort. I can't really see a bone saw being a standard issue melee weapon for either the Americans or the Japanese. 
Next up, we're going to talk about some different soldier names coming with this update, and then this implies the different numbers of soldiers that you'll be able to customize for each of the factions. Both the American and Japanese factions, they'll get their own sets of soldiers that you can choose from. And of course, there'll be separate factions within the company menu. You'll be able to set up a bunch of different classes with different soldiers that have got different outfits and uniforms on. So for the Japanese, we have six soldier names. Akemi, Fumiko, and Miyoko are females, and Isamu, Masao, and Hiroshi are males. And for the Americans, we have Jean, Alice, and Marie as females, and Frank, Edward, and James as males. With six soldiers per faction found in the files so far, that does represent quite a significant drop compared to the British Allied faction, and it's also lower than the German faction as well, although if you watch my last video on data mines, you'll know that a few more facial assets were found for the Germans, so their number might actually be increasing. It might well be that these are just some of the named soldiers that we'll be able to customise, and that wouldn't surprise me, considering none of what we're talking about is actually finalised yet. And then besides normal soldiers, we also have some information on two potential elite soldiers coming to Battlefield 5 during the Pacific chapter. One for the Japanese, one for the Americans. For the Japanese, we have Kensui Nakamura. He is born in Kyoto and he's a scholar by trade and he was conscripted into the army during World War II and apparently he has a skill set for sidearm combat. His in-game quote is for my family and my homeland. And for the Americans, we have Jack Culver. Born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, he is a mounted machine gun specialist. He's an MMG boomer from World War II. He might have already completed 12 missions in the European theater, but he was one of the first to volunteer to move over to the Pacific, and that's where he's been reassigned. His in-game quote is, I never learned to say I quit, and I don't intend to. And then, something quite interesting and fairly different from everything we've talked about so far, dog tag charms have been found in the files for the United States, Japan, France, and Italy. You can see the different styles here on the screen, and these will be animated as well, so as you move they're going to swing around and they'll bounce off your gun. We've actually spoken about charms before on the channel, it was, it was quite a while back now, before the beginning of Chapter 4, so I wouldn't be surprised if you'd actually forgotten about them, but... Right now, there aren't any mentions of German or British dog tag charms in the files, but as I said with the name soldiers that we just spoke about, this isn't final content, so things can still change, but we've got dog tags for France and Italy, which are two factions not really represented in Battlefield 5 at the moment, so that's quite interesting. There's also a potential new name for one of the maps that was discovered in a previous data mine. The map that was named Tropic Islands now has the name Pacific Storm. Some new name locations on the map include Radio Tower, Beach Camp, Courtyard and Water Tower. They seem to match the artwork that we have for the map right now and it does seem that DICE might be getting everything ready to be switched over to proper titling now that we are so close to launch. But the name Pacific Storm? That kind of sounds like Paracel Storm from Battlefield 4. And if you look at the map, we've got lots of islands in a small space. The word storm, maybe we're seeing lots of waves here. Could this be Battlefield 5's version of Paracel Storm? I really liked Paracel Storm in Battlefield 4, actually. So if that was kind of what they were going for here in the Pacific, I think that would be pretty cool to play on. And then lastly, we have a possible new squad reinforcement for the American faction. This is the Sherman Calliope. I think that's how you pronounce it. Probably not how you pronounce it, but we're just going to go with it. This is an M4 Sherman with multiple rocket launchers bolted to the turret, and it can fire 60 tubes of rockets. It's kind of like one frame, and they all fire in different sections, but yeah, there are 60 tubes up there. Small numbers were produced during the war, using slightly different calibers of rocket along the way, but they had a maximum range of about 5,000 yards, or 5 kilometers, so these things went pretty far. Now, of all of this info, I'd say I'm most intrigued by the multiple different melee weapons that we're going to see. We've already had a lot of them in Battlefield 5, and previously Battlefield 1 added a lot of them in the post-launch DLC as well. I'm interested to see which of them end up as class-specific options or default options for each faction, which become unlocks for Tides of War, and then which are melee weapons for the different elite soldiers in the game. 
and of course those dog tag charms as well for the different countries. Why have we got France and Italy but we haven't got Germany and Britain? Or they could be coming but why are France and Italy in there when we don't have those as factions in Battlefield 5? I don't know if DICE are just trying to give more nations some presence in the game or whether that's a hint towards future factions for Battlefield 5. Could well be, not sure at the moment, but that's why I'm most intrigued in it. But let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments. I'm still waiting for DICE to properly wow me with Battlefield 5, to properly take me by surprise. I've really enjoyed Operation Underground. That's been a really good piece of content for the game, and the fact that the bugs are being fixed now is really, really cool, but I'm just waiting for something massive to take me by surprise. And I kind of feel the Pacific is what they're doing there. We've only had a couple of very small pieces of information about the Pacific released. We've had that bit at the end of the Chapter 4 trailer. We know Iwo Jima is coming as one of the maps. And then, of course, we've had this screenshot released just a few days ago. But really, officially, we don't really have anything to wow us at the moment. And I kind of feel like DICE is building up to something here with the Pacific Chapter. But let me know what you think down below in the comments anyway. I think we're on a good path with the game at the moment. Hopefully DICE can deliver something solid and enjoyable for this specific chapter. Thanks very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed it or a dislike if you didn't. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.